Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 34, a little bit longer scriptures than sometimes that I uh, usually pick out, but I feel like God has a, a message for us today. Amen? I'm going to read the scripture, and then we have a, a promo video for this. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side, of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders, named Jairus, came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, can you say that with me? When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, somebody say immediately. Immediately, immediately her blood bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? Can you say that with me? Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell on his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith. Can you say that with me? Your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. You may be seated this morning. Because I got to have faith. I got to have faith. Because I got to go for faith. I got to have faith. For faith, for faith. Good morning, Crosspoint Church. I'm excited to let you know that starting this Sunday, we'll begin a new series of messages called People of Faith. You don't want to miss any of these messages. I believe that you'll be encouraged, your spirit will be stirred, and your faith will be lifted to a new level. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing the Word of God, so don't miss your chance to hear the Word. Because I gotta have faith. Ooh, I gotta have faith. Because I gotta have faith. faith, faith. I gotta have faith. Because I gotta have faith. I gotta have faith. Amen. Uh, you know, in the text that we just read, and I'm going to jump right into this because I, we need to get through this and, and, and there's some things in it that, that you just need to hear. But in the text that we just looked at and we just read, there are two very different people. Probably couldn't be any more different people. You have Jairus, who is the leader of the synagogue. And just by his uh, uh, position, he would have been very influential. He would have been well thought of in the community. He would have uh, had, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, some power and influence in the community. And then on the opposite end of the extreme is simply the woman with an issue of bleeding. Now, if you'll notice just right off the bat, we don't even get her name, which probably tells us something about this uh, little woman that she was not probably well known in the community that uh, because of the uh, issue that she had, that she would have been isolated or maybe even ostracized from the community because it was considered unclean or uh, really she would have been like an outcast in the community. Not even able to go to church, not able to go to the synagogue. So you see we have two very uh, different people, but 
Uh, instead of centering on the differences today, what I want you to see and understand is that people of all walks of life, uh, even though they're very different, uh, all face what I want to call a code blue situation. And it doesn't matter uh, if you have a lot of money or a little money. It doesn't matter if you come from the right side of the tracks or the wrong side of the tracks, uh, so to speak. All of us face what I'm going to call a code blue situation. Uh, you know, those words might not mean much to you if you've never spent any time uh, in a hospital. But uh, in a hospital, the whole atmosphere begins to change as you hear a code blue uh, situation sounded. Uh, the atmosphere begins to change. Nurses and doctors and EMT workers begin to go on high alert as they uh, go out and they're trying to find the situation. Why is it a code blue? Because there is an emergency. Look at your neighbor and say, it's an emergency. And, and, and somebody's life is hanging in the balance. And, and those doctors, what they do over the next few moments are, could make a difference in somebody's life. And in the next few moments, it is a life and a death situation. Now, many of you might not know it, but uh, I ha actually have a degree in healthcare administration. I uh, never worked a, a full day in a hospital except to do a, an in internship. And, and during that internship, there was a person that was responsible for me, for my education, that I would experience various things across the healthcare industry. And uh, this guy decided that it would be a, a good thing for me to experience the code blue. To see what a hospital, an emergency situation was really like. And, and can I tell you that I'll never forget this. Uh, I, I was able there to experience two code blue situations. Watched an older man die right in front of my eyes. Had never seen that before. Still have it to this day. But then... You know, the great thing, too, is that the next time that there was one, and this gentleman made it. What I want you to understand is, whether young or old, rich or poor, black or white or brown or yellow, whatever it might be, that all of us in life are going to face some cold blue situations. Right. Can I get an amen? amen. Uh, you may have been there uh, in your life. You may, uh, but there is a cold blue here in this situation uh, that sounded. Something has to be done. Look at your neighbor and say, something's got to be done. Uh, and it's got to be done quickly. Uh, if they were to pause or to procrastinate, uh, the, the life itself is in jeopardy. Uh, you know, people uh, procrastinate is, is to kill sometimes. When we procrastinate, it is a killer, especially in a hospital situations. But what I want you to understand is that people die of heart attacks and strokes every day because they procrastinate. Marriages die every day because husbands and wives procrastinate. Can you help me out? Ministries die every day because uh, ministers procrastinate. At some point in your life, you will face a cold blue situation. But here's the good news. It is the business of the church. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, it's our job. To point people to Jesus Christ, uh, the great physician of all code blues. Yeah. No matter what the situation, he is the great physician. Right. Can I get an amen? amen? You see, the most important thing that you could ever do in a code blue situation is get to the doctor. It's get to the real doctor. Come on, you know what I'm saying. You gotta get to Jesus. The most important thing that you could possibly ever do is get to Him. Yes. Now we're gonna see this in this uh, story that that is told of, of, of a little woman. She's sickly. She's frail. For 12 years, she's been sick. The the very lifeblood is draining out of her. But I want you to see the determination of this little woman. Now you got to preach with me, okay? you got to help me out because this little woman, she was sickly, she was frail. She had very little energy about her. How many of you ever uh, uh, understand when you lose blood that you begin to go down, that your energy is zapped? And, and here's this woman. But yet 
uh, no matter what, she was determined that she would get yeah. to Jesus. And then, no matter what, this little frail woman had decided that I am going to make it to Jesus right. today. I'm going to get there. I'm going to yeah. touch Him. You see, uh, today, some of you may be facing your own code blue situation right. uh, in this place. And, and I'm not talking about just a little bit of a difficulty, an uncomfortable or inconvenient time. You see, sometimes we think certain things are emergencies when they're not. Uh -oh. Come on. How about when the internet goes down? <laughs> uh, oh, it's an emergency. Uh, uh, what about when the AC goes out? You know, it's, it's hot. It's an emergency. Uh, some of us think it's an emergency to run out of Diet Pepsi. <laughs> Amen? You see, uh, that's not really what we're talking about here. I'm talking about a real cold blue situation, yeah. a real emergency. Uh, you can see there's something about an emergency that creates urgency. Yeah. Right. This little woman had decided, and, and, and we see the story. She had gone to every doctor. She had done everything that she could, and, and there was, but yet there was still deep inside of her an urgency to get to Jesus. Yeah. Right. And, and, and she was saying, I need to get to Him. I, I, I've got to get to Jesus. This woman in her uh, situation, uh, her life was hanging in the balance. I want you to understand if something didn't happen, soon and very soon she would have uh, passed away. Uh, it wasn't just a bad hair day. Uh, it was uh, an emergency situation yeah. that she was in. I want to tell you, uh, my friend Jimmy uh, Patillo would say she was broke and busted and disgusted. Uh -huh. She was all, you know, it, it was a life or death situation that she must get uh, to Jesus. Uh, right. And she tried everything. But she was worse off than ever before. How many ever felt like you're in that situation? No, no matter what you tried. And, uh, but, but the good news scattered throughout this story is that there was still a ray of hope for this woman. Yes. There, there was, uh, how do I know that? How do I know that she still had a ray of hope? Verse 27 says it like this. When she heard about Jesus. Yeah. You, you see, it doesn't matter what the situation is, how close to life or death you are, or whatever the situation might be, when you hear about Jesus, whenever she heard about Jesus, they began to get a, a little bit of hope down inside of her. I want you to understand that the message of Jesus Christ, no matter how weak the situation, it always brings hope. It always brings a chance that there's victory just yeah. waiting to be uh, had. And there's always the chance because of the message of the gospel. Amen? Yeah. Because of the message of the gospel. You see, the message brings about change. Yes, it does. If we're ready to hear it. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready to hear it? Yeah. Are you ready to hear it? Yeah. Romans 10, 17 says this. So then faith. <coughs> we're talking about faith for the next five or six weeks. How many need more faith? Yeah. Every hand in the building ought to be going up. We need more faith. I mean, it takes faith for us to make it through, to get through. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You see, somehow she had heard about Jesus. I wonder, can I sidetrack just a little bit? Yeah. Go for it. I wonder how many in our community are hearing about Jesus. Uh -huh. I wonder, are, are we uh, doing the job that we should be doing? How many uh -huh. are, who are experiencing a cold blue situation are hearing about a uh -huh. what? There's a message of hope? Right. What, what about this man, Jesus? What do I need to know? How can right. I get to him? That is the message. And that, that's what we need to be doing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That we Amen. let people know about Jesus. That's right. Somehow, she heard about Jesus. I don't know what she heard. She might have heard about the blind, uh, the eyes of the blind being opened. She might have heard about the leper uh, being healed. She might have heard about the lame walking. I don't know what she heard, but I do know that this woman heard the message about Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Uh, and look at your neighbor and say, I hear the message. I hear the message. And it's changing me. It's changing me. 
Amen. You, you see, the message will change you. It's a message of faith. It's yeah. a message of believing in Jesus yeah. Christ. That's the message. And all, you see, I don't know how she heard it, but all I know is that I've seen hopeless situations turned around. That's right. I've seen people who were supposed uh, to die get better. Yeah. I, I, I've seen lives that were a wreck put back together, and all because yeah. they heard the message yeah. about Jesus Christ. Uh, it's because of the message of Jesus Christ. That's why we uh, exist as a church. That's uh, uh, the message that we believe that uh, all things are possible with Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's that message. And when you encounter <coughs> Jesus Christ, you're going to walk away different. Yes, you will. You're going you're gonna to walk away different. You're going you're gonna to have a different step, a little pep in your step when you truly encounter Jesus. Right. How, how many know what I'm talking about? Have, have you been there and, and you thought, I don't know where to turn to. I don't know how to fix this situation. But an encounter with Jesus Christ and all of a sudden you got a little hope. All of a sudden you got some victory down inside of it. And you begin to believe that there can be a difference. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You see, it's an encounter with Jesus that will make a difference. So, but let me tell you this, just hearing won't make the biggest difference. you got to hear, but it's when we mix it with faith. Yes. Come on now. Right. right. It's when we mix that message with faith that things begin to change. Yes. This little wo woman heard about the message and she decided to do something about it. Oh, come on. She decided that she was going to encounter Jesus. Yeah. That she was going to walk away different. That there was going to be nothing that would prevent her. Oh, some of you ought to hear this. About getting to Jesus. Yeah. I need to get to Jesus. She said, and I don't care who's in the way. I don't care if it's politically correct. I don't care. I'm yeah. going to Jesus. And I need to get to him. That's what this woman, she was determined. She was determined head strong that she was going to get to Jesus. Now, in order to get to Jesus, it can't be an accident. Right. It's intentional. Yeah. This woman was head set. Uh, can I tell you that she wasn't content to just hear a little message about Jesus? Right. Uh, a, a, a little patty cake. Come on, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Sometimes we, we get the, uh, we're, we're okay with, I'm, I'm going to go to church today, I'm going to do my do. I'm, I'm going to listen to pastor's message, but, but it ain't going to affect me. I got uh, things to do afterwards. Uh -huh. and, and you see, it's not patty cake. The message right. will change you. Yeah. If you will incorporate it into your life. If you encounter Jesus Christ and mix it with faith. Right. Look at your neighbor again and say, i got to have faith. Yeah. i got to have faith. You see, she wasn't content to play patty cake and go home. She knew if things were going to change, that if she was going to be healed, that she must pursue yes. Jesus. Yeah. You see, too many times we sit back in the pews. We listen and we sing a few songs. We listen to the pastor's message. And we go away unchanged, unmoved. Come on, now help me. Uh, I've been there, you've been there. Why weren't we moved? Why weren't we changed? Because we did not truly pursue Him. Yikes. Well, come on now. Help me preach. Pull back your toes a little bit, but, but it's okay. The reason why we walk away unchanged is because we don't truly right. pursue God. We don't go after Him. I want you to know that the Word confirms that if we will seek Him, that He will be found. Yeah. That if we will go after Him, that, that we will uh, experience and encounter Him. Uh, there is no excuses. Can I say that? Is that alright? Uh, that we must push in, and we must pursue, and we must encounter Jesus. Amen? Amen? Yes. Amen. You guys are getting quiet on me. Am I preaching too hard? Yeah. Oh, come on. Uh, you see, it is yet to be seen. God will do with the people who will truly pursue Him with all their hearts and, and all of their strength. You see, if you truly want things to change, you've got to pursue Jesus Christ. Amen? You, you, you've got to pursue Him. Oh, there's so much in this, but i, I got to move on. You see, the thing that made this woman different, she knew she was dying. 
She knew it was life and death, and she didn't have time to play church. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Come on. Help me preach. Help me preach. She didn't have time to play church. She didn't have the time to be cute and to be proper. She knew it was a life or death situation right. with this woman. Uh, I can imagine her saying, I've just got to touch his clothes. I, I've got to uh, press in there. Yeah. Imagine, imagine her pushing through the crowd. I, I thought about setting up a, a defensive line and me trying to push through it, but that's just, just that's too much, you know? But here's this little woman. She stooped down because she knows she can't stand up and be seen by everyone because they would have said, go away. You're, you're not allowed to be here. You're not allowed to be around holy and righteous people. Uh, somebody help me out. You know there's people in this community that feel like they're not allowed to be around righteous people, but they need to press into Jesus. We need to let them get into Jesus. Amen? And so here's this little woman. She's sneaking through the crowd. She's pushing, maybe throwing an elbow here and an elbow there. And then she's pushing her way She's a little lady. She's frail. But yet there is a determination that I've got to make it to Jesus. Yes. I've got to make it to the Master. I want you to know that if you'll have that determination, that if you'll just say in your mind and in your spirit and your faith will engage that I've got to get to Jesus, that you'll see the results of the prayers that you have been praying. Of oh, uh, Hallelujah. I believe that you can press in. I believe that you can get a hold of Jesus. And she's going through... And she's pressing through. And she's saying, I've got to get to Jesus. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, I've got to get to him. Got to get to him. Yes. See, she said, he's my last hope. And I must touch him. So she kept pressing her way through the crowd. Uh, I, she might have said, I may not be pretty today, but I'm here. And I'm going after yes. Jesus. She said, I'm almost dead, but I'm pressing after yes. Jesus. She said, the doctors couldn't fix me, but I'm going yes. after Jesus. You see, uh, they, uh, they told her that the blinded eyes had been opened. They said Jesus had healed the blinded eyes. Uh, they told her that he had made the cripple walk. They told her that he had made the deaf to hear. They told her that he had had power over the demons. And I believe she was looking around and she was saying, I don't have an appointment, but I've got to see Jesus. I might be uh, a little bit late, but I've got to see Jesus. I wish I had seen it before the 12 years of the doctors. Yes. I don't want you to see as she was suffering not just of the disease but of the doctors because she wasn't seeking the real physician. Well, that ought to speak to you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with going to the doctor. I go. I get things checked out. But he's the great physician. Yes. Yes. He's the one that when the doctors say, and I, uh, Earl was here just a few weeks ago, and I was told that the doctors said that, that they thought that a certain mass was cancer. It wasn't. I believe Jesus touched him. Yes. Yes. Amen. They said, this is what the doctors said. This is the report. Huh. I mean, those we have a different report. Yes. And that we can believe. And we can get a hold of the master. And we can press in. And we can get a hold of him. You see. When she touched him. She was immediately made whole. What does that tell you? Just one touch. Is all it takes. To change your life. That ought to preach to your spirit. If you don't get excited about it, uh, it, it maybe later on oh, it will kick in, okay? Just one touch. Just one touch yes. will change your life yes. forever. One touch will deliver you. One touch will set you free. One touch will change your mind. One touch will deliver you from the power of the enemy. All it takes is just one touch. It doesn't matter what the situation is. And it doesn't matter how long you've had it. Jesus can handle it. 
Look at your neighbor and tell them that Jesus can handle it. Jesus. Yeah. You see, there, there are some people here who need to understand that, need to hear it. Jesus can handle it. When this woman reached Jesus, she didn't have any more money, any more resources. She didn't have any friends. All she had was faith. Hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, that's more than enough. <laughs> all she had was faith. She had used all her resources. She had probably tried every, uh, uh, you know, test, every uh, imaginable thing. And all she had left was faith. You might be there today. I don't know what you're facing, but let me tell you, that faith is enough. If it's placed in Jesus Christ. Amen. She kept pushing her way to Jesus. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. Why the hem? Why? It was it I can't get into it too much detail, but there was an expression on the hem of his authority. And I tell you. That Jesus has authority over every situation, yes. right. over every sickness, Amen. over everything the enemy would try and yes. do against you. And she said, I need to get to Jesus. Right. Do, do you see it today? Do you see this little woman? You, are, are you hearing that I've got to have faith? That I've got to press in? That I've got to touch Jesus. Teresa, would you come to the piano this morning? Let's look at this situation one more time from an aerial view. That day, there were a lot of people in the crowd. There was the people that just pressed in next to Jesus. They might feel those Holy Ghost goosebumps. <laughs> come on now, you know what I'm saying? The anointing as it come off of Him. And, and there was... Jairus, who was facing his own code blue situation. There were the disciples who still didn't get it. What do you mean? Somebody touched you. Don't you see all the people around? But the truth of the matter is that day, only one person truly touched Jesus. But that touch was different than all the rest because it was a touch of faith. Yes. It was a point of contact for her. Her faith was able to reach out and touch his garment. Reach out in a way that said, it doesn't matter if I'm supposed to be here or not. She reached out. You see, the good news for us is that Jesus is still passing by. <laughs> He's still passing by. He's still the healer. He's still able to fix every problem and every situation in your life. But here's the question. But who will touch you. But who will touch you? Pastor, you don't understand. I'm not sure how I'm even going to feed myself tomorrow. Who will touch you? The doctors have said what I have is incurable. But who will touch you? the greatest miracles that we can ever experience in our life is deliverance, salvation from sin. Amen. And it only comes to those who will touch Him in faith. Who will reach out with their heart and say, I believe. 
I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that He died on the cross. I believe that He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Faith that says, I believe that He was raised again by God on the third day. But who will touch Him? As I scan the crowd today, I know that there are problems and situations. I know there are things that, that you may not want to reveal. Can I tell you, you don't have to. Just touch Him. Just grab the hem of His garments. He's here. He's passing by. And you 